everyone. Today, I will be introducing to you congestive heart failure. By definition, heart failure is a clinical syndrome resulting from structural or functional cardiac disorders that impair the ability of the ventricles to fill or reject blood. In the past, heart failure was often referred to as congestive heart failure because many patients experience pulmonary or peripheral congestion with edema. The term heart failure indicates myocardial disease in which impaired contraction of the heart or systolic dysfunction or filling of the heart or diastolic dysfunction may cause pulmonary or systemic congestion. There are two types of congestive heart failure. These are systolic heart failure and diastolic heart failure. Systolic heart failure is an impairment in the ability of the heart to contract and empty, and it has an ejection fraction of less than 40%. Ejection fraction is a percentage of blood ejected with each contraction and the normal EF is 65 to 75 percent. Diastolic heart failure is the impairment of the heart's ability to relax. During diastole, the myocardium um, becomes stiff and thickens, impairing the heart's ability to fill. Congestive heart failure may be caused by other health conditions, and these include hypertension, coronary artery disease, valvular disorders, cardiomyopathy, renal dysfunction, and diabetes. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology of congestive heart failure. In systolic heart failure or left-sided heart failure, a decrease in cardiac output results to decrease effective arterial blood volume. It is also responsible for the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system to release epinephrine and norepinephrine. And as a response, there will be an increased heart rate and contractility to support the feeling myocardium. And this also causes vasoconstriction. Renal compensatory changes occurs, which cause a decrease in renal and cortical blood flow. Sodium reabsorption follows a decrease in free water clearance. Effective blood volume then increases, which results to um, accumulation of blood in the lungs. When the left ventricle cannot effectively pump blood into the systemic circulation, pulmonary congestion occurs, which later on leads to pulmonary hypertension. Fluid leaks into the interstitial space and alveoli and results to pulmonary edema. Oxygen in blood also decreases as the heart failure progresses. In right-sided heart failure, there is an accumulation of blood in the systemic venous system, an increase lung pressure and increased pressure in pulmonary vasculature. The increases in right atrial and ventricular pressure causes the right heart to pump and effectively into the pulmonary system. And as a result, venous return um, decreases and the organs become congested with blood and peripheral dependent edema occurs. The signs and symptoms are of heart failure are often difficult to identify because they are frequently confused with other disorders. The clinical manifestations for right-sided heart failure include peripheral edema, 
weight gain, ascites, fever engorgement or discomfort, abdominal bloating, anorexia, nausea, generalized weakness, hepatospinomegaly, jugular venous ascension, and positive hepatojugular flux. And for the left-sided heart failure, its manifestations are dyspnea, parasexual nocturnal dyspnea, orthopnea, fatigue, dry calf, pectoria, cardiomegaly, tachypnea, tachycardia, bilateral crackles, and palpitations. The diagnostic test may include an echocardiogram, which um, determines the ventricular wall motion and can differentiate systolic from diastolic dysfunction. This test is also considered as the gold standard of diagnostic tests. And uh, a chest X-ray studies can also show an enlarged heart and prominent pulmonary vasculature. ECG, uh, 12 need ECG may show a prior myocardial infarction, particular enlargement, or presence of this this retina. Other diagnostic procedures are serum electrolytes, UN or blood urea nitrogen, fever function test, CBC, routine urinalysis, brain nutriuretic peptide or BNP measurement, cardiac stress test, and cardiac catheterization may also be performed to determine whether coronary artery disease and cardiac ischemia are causing the heart failure. The medical management or the common medications used to treat heart failure include ACE inhibitors, which promote vasodilation, beta blockers to relax the blood vessels and lower blood pressure, carbs and diuretics to, um, to remove excess extracellular fluid. Surgical management include cardiac synchronization therapy or transplantation and left ventricular assist device. The general nursing interventions for congestive heart failure include promoting activity intolerance, managing fluid volume, minimizing powerlessness, monitoring and managing potential complications, and educating patients about self-care. Common nursing diagnoses are activity intolerance related to decreased cardiac output, excess fluid volume related to heart failure, anxiety-related symptoms related to complexity of the therapeutic management, and powerlessness related to chronic illness and hospitalization. That's all for today. Thank you for listening.